three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, theys, and gays. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter, here. Hope you've all had a great start to your new year. I've got a review for the latest uh, Anya Taylor-Joy uh, Ray Fiennes offering in the menu, which is directed by Mark Mlaud, who has gone ahead and directed uh 13 episodes of uh, Succession. I need to get into Succession. I still still haven't watched it. Uh, directed some episodes of Shameless, uh, The Affair, Game of Thrones. It's written by uh, Seth Reese and Will Tracy. Uh, Reese has worked on... Wow, he's in a lot of it. He, he's worked on uh, Late Night with Seth Meyers. Written over... three, uh, Helped on 333 episodes. He wrote for Comedy Bang Bang, which... I was a big fan of back in the day. And then Will Tracy has worked on 50 episodes of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. He's also written a couple episodes of Succession as well. So I'm just going to jump on in here. When I saw the trailer for this, I was instantly hyped because Anya Taylor-Joy, outside of my, uh, my, my uh, huge crush on her, I think she's just one of the most talented actresses we have working today. She truly, she continues on this trajectory, will be one of the best actresses of her generation. I haven't reviewed The Queen's Gambit yet, and I really don't have an excuse on why I haven't, because I love that so much. But you know her from Morgan, New Mutants, The Witch, uh, The Northmen, which she's excellent in, Um, Emma, which is another thing I should review, actually. But... Yeah, she's absolutely incredible. Ray finds, you know, as you know, Lord Voldemort, uh, M in the uh, Bond saga, um, and, Nich- and Nicholas Holt. I, I do want to take a second to talk about Nicholas Holt because, first off, he was an incredible um, Hank McCoy. I, I wish he would have gotten more to do, but for what he was given, he was absolutely incredible. Um, Warm Bodies is fucking amazing, and I think people forget about Warm Bodies, but he's great in that, and those who wish me dead... That's a very underrated Nicholas Holt performance. It was cool seeing him get to play something more villainous. And that's one reason I dig on this movie so much. Because this movie is about a young couple who goes to this remote island that is ran by a chef, uh, Slowick, uh, Ray Fine's character. And it's a very, you know, 1% of the 1%. It's a very elite group that goes... Uh, I believe they said the plates uh, the plates were twelve uh, yeah twelve uh, twelve hundred and fifty dollars a head, which I was like, holy shit, that is absurd. But it's a very high end, you know, you have to really pay to be here sort of experience. And hearing Nicholas Holtz Tyler explain <laughs> to Anna Taylor Joy's Margo why she she should be excited and how she should eat the food. There's a point very early on where it does come across as endearing. Like, he's just so excited to be here. Uh, like, this this is a big deal for him. And so at first, it's kind of endearing. But the more that shit goes on, the more you go, oh, man, this guy is a super douche. And I, I really appreciate the way Holt plays Tyler because he is ambitious in the sense that he does appreciate uh, all of the pageantry and the artistic merit that being a chef and that these people are putting out which is something that i do think is lost on food sometimes but he just goes to an extreme with it that i went dude you gotta ease the fuck up and Margot's having that internal dialogue at multiple points with her uh, with herself uh, and Anya Taylor Joy does a great job in her facial express, uh, expressions of just looking so exasperated at points as the film goes on but also being like I'm here for you know I'm here for you I'm trying to make sure you're enjoying yourself and there's just a point where the dam breaks and you go well cool we're past the point of no return here there are other uh, there are other people, of course, who go ahead and join them. One of the bigger ones being uh, John Lequizamo, who between this and Violent Night, Lequizamo's had a hell of a year. Uh, I he said that his uh, his portrayal was. 
based on Steven Seagal. And oh my God, he's such a piece of shit in this movie. Him and his uh, assistant, I I believe it's Amy Carrero, plays Felicity. I want to say that's his assistant. But their banter back and forth as far as her clearly using her as a means to an end as far as trying to, you know, really just elevate his ego versus how she's using him as a means to end to further her aspirations. That's the big thing that I love about this movie is that the way that everyone's motivations and their goals and their wants and desires tie into the actual food is extremely fascinating. It's it's very Twilight Zone. And I, f- I would love to talk to uh, Seth the Reason and Will Tracy and ask them was... Twilight Zone kind of the format, because even the way it's kind of broken down, they do a very clever job of using the meals to go ahead and kind of reset what you think is happening. And the way that each meal flows into the next meal is incredibly well done. This film never never loses momentum for me, and it all does feel very natural in the world that it does a really good job of setting up in a quitty, uh, in a pretty quick fashion. But everything does feel like a natural progression. Nothing feels forced. Every decision feels like, okay, this this is what should be happening. There's no dumb white people decisions, which if you've listened to the podcast, that is just a giant peeve of mine of, you know, oh, we heard something outside. Let's all go. You know, one of us will go out. It, it, shit like that drives me insane. And there's really nothing like that in here. Everything is very logical, which I went, oh. That's really fucking awesome. And I I, I love that. I, I don't want to get into too much into spoilers because I do want people to discover shit for themselves. But a couple things I will just mention that are not spoilery. There is a point where they serve a breadless bread plate. And that's one of the funniest fucking things I've seen all year. And I, just, I could not stop laughing. And the way that Tyler is trying to explain it to Margot, she's just looking at him like he has three horns growing on the top of his head. And t- to be fair, yeah, uh, pretty <laughs> pretty dumb when he's trying to explain it. The other uh, person I do want to shout out that I haven't mentioned yet is uh, Elsa, who is a chef, uh, Slowick's right-hand woman, who's played by Hong Chao, who was also uh, Liz in The Whale. And she's amazing in The Whale. And I was so happy to see her in this. She's in... Two amazing movies in the same year. Let, let, let's fucking go. Uh, I'm I'm so happy for her, and she's playing a completely different role here. Because in the in the whale, she's playing someone that is you know so hurt but wants to see Charlie do well. Here, she's playing someone who's out to uh, has no desires of her own. Is truly only there to carry out uh, Chef's vision. And the way that Elsa and Margot end up interacting. In the way that she interacts with the guests as far as keeping them in line as things starts to go ahead and break down. It is fucked up how efficient she is and yet how you can tell she's been doing this for so long that she's either numb to it or that she's enjoying it. And the film definitely kind of lean, helps you lean one more one way or the other on that. But again, I, I want to go ahead and uh, I'll leave that for y'all to to uh, discover for yourselves. Uh, another thing that I really appreciate about this movie is not only how the food ties in together to our characters, but the way that certain meals tie into people's motivations. There's a point where Chef is just calling out everyone on their bullshit, and the meal that's attached to that was something I went, oh, that's really fucking clever, and I, I really love that. And the way that you feel the tension rising in the film and how everyone realizes as things continue to evolve how how much danger they're truly in. The, the trailer does a good job of not letting you know really what's happening, but as stuff starts to break down, you go, oh man, they're they're kind of fucked. And, and the movie does a great job of making you feel like the walls are constantly closing in. And for being under two hours, uh, it's an hour 47, they cram a ton of content in here, but there's nothing that I would personally cut at all. Everything that is in this movie feels very deliberate. It feels necessary. And the more I watched it, the more I just found myself falling in love with it. And the way that Chef talks about food and his relationship with food and why he's serving each dish. It's really fascinating getting to his psyche and seeing why 
his worldview is the way it is and how he views these people who are spending this much money to go ahead and to go ahead and and, and interact with all these people and interact with him and enjoy his food. There is a death that happens of someone, and I, I'll just leave it at that. But when this death happens, it's really the first one of the film. When this death happens, it caught me so off guard. I was like, holy shit. And from that moment, you know the movie's not playing because the movie is very slowly setting up the pieces on the, on, you know, setting up the pieces on the, on the game board and you're kind of sitting there observing everything, kind of going, all right, where are we, you know, where are we going here? And once that death hits, it's just all systems go. But for an hour 47, especially, I was never bored. I was always captivated with what I was seeing on screen. I was always intrigued by what I was seeing on screen. Margot is a great avatar for the audience as she just observes so much of what's happening in the way that we get some great scenes with Margot and uh, Chef uh, Slowick. I love their interactions and there's not a ton of them, but there's just enough for you to go, okay, this is very important because of this thing. If there is a complaint, I do believe some people are going to get to the end, the, the ending itself, and go, okay, that's fine. Like I, I really think some people are just going to not be crazy about the ending. I will say myself, I like the ending, but it does feel at points like it might go somewhere else and then it doesn't. But I like the way this ended. Uh, it, it wasn't anything that would make me take away from my enjoyment of the film or anything like that. But I, I, if the inning does rub you a little bit the wrong way, I, I can kind of see where you're coming from. Outside of that, getting to my final thoughts here, I just, I had so much fun with this movie. I thought this movie was going to be fun, and I didn't realize how much fun it was going to be. In the way that the pretentiousness <laughs> continues to be ramped up, even as people are dying and all this bad shit is happening... It's kind of amazing how the movie continues to lean into uh, into it and the way that food is its own love language and the fact that Chef Slowick believes that. But the methods of what she's going to express that are very insane. I love Anya Taylor joining this. This, again, another great performance from her between this and the Northman. She's just amazing. And, you know, I talked about last night in Soho last year. She's just an incredible actress. We were very lucky to get to see her do her thing. I'm so happy for Hong uh, Xiao being in another great, uh, another great flick, having another great performance. I really hope she, her star, continues to elevate. Uh, Ray Fines, Ray Fines is like never bad in anything. So, but seeing how haunting he is in this. There's a point where he does. I, I can give this away where he talks to Margot and flat out says that. Uh, you're not eating, you're destroying me. And it's just a very small look into how Chef Slowick is viewing everyone and how in control he is. The film does a really great job of giving you background on him as he's using the dishes to explain to the people how they tie into the overall theme of the night. Uh, they do a very good job of giving you some a background chef without having to stop the movie to go ahead and do it. So I just adore this movie. It's a fan fucking tastic. I, I I can't wait to buy this. Um I hope there's a steel book of it because I dug the movie that much. I, I cannot wait to watch this again. Uh absolutely, absolutely amazing movie. So yeah, cheers. Cheers to the menu. But Everyone, the menu, what'd you think of it? Let us know in the comments. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow me on uh, Twitter and on uh, Instagram at jhunterrealpineapple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on SoundCloud, Apple Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Music, and Samsung Podcasts at The Real Pineapple. Don't forget to like both our pages on Facebook at The Real Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games, that's R-E-E-L Pineapple. And don't forget to go ahead and follow me on Letterboxd at Black Shazam, and follow me on TikTok at Black Shazam 775. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. We will have our best and worst of 2022 up on January 29th. Can't wait to bring that to y'all. And we'll also have reviews incoming for The Fablemans, She Said, uh, Puss in Boots' Last Wish, among others. 
uh, I'm over here in Nevada and it's been snowing, so I'm going to try to get to the, the, uh, to the theater and maybe see Megan. But everyone, thank you so much for listening. Stay safe out there. Hope your year is getting off to a great start. Thanks for the support, and we will talk to you soon.